In the year 2006, a decision was made that would ripple across the fabric of astronomy and public wonder. Pluto, once celebrated as the ninth planet of our solar system, was cast aside. Reclassified, demoted, stripped of its planetary title. A world that had once captured the imagination of stargazers and schoolchildren alike, now labeled a dwarf planet. To many, it became a footnote, an icy rock drifting in the cold silence beyond Neptune. An exile in the solar system's outermost reaches. A remnant. A relic. A has-been. But now, nearly 20 years later, Pluto is stepping back into the light. Not by its own power, but by the eye of a marvel, the James Webb Space Telescope. The most powerful instrument humanity has ever aimed into the stars. And what it sees is not a dead, silent world, but one that is alive with mystery. Pluto is not a forgotten pebble in the void. It is a planet in all but name, vibrant, dynamic, and whispering secrets to those who listen. The first clues came not from its surface, but from the skies above it. Pluto's atmosphere, once thought too thin and too frigid to hold complexity, is not what we imagine. Scientists believed it was nothing more than a faint shroud of nitrogen, laced with traces of methane and carbon monoxide. Too faint to shift. Too cold to move. Too lifeless to change. But James Webb's infrared vision pierced that veil and saw movement. It detected haze, layered, stratified, drifting haze. Thin clouds, curling like smoke over frozen plains. Faint signals of chemistry at play, molecules dancing in ultraviolet light. The atmosphere is not still. It is in motion, shaped by subtle seasons and Pluto's strange orbit. This world, distant and small, may have its own alien climate cycle. Not in days or months, but in centuries. And then, it looked down to the surface. Down to the frozen ridges, the shadowed basins, the broad plains that stretch like scars across the face of Pluto. What it saw defied the textbooks. Pluto is not geologically dead. Its surface is young in many places, astonishingly young. There are regions with barely any craters at all. Some surfaces have been reshaped in cosmic recent time. What could do this in a world so far from the sun? The answer may be hidden beneath the ice. Cryovolcanoes, volcanoes that erupt not molten rock, but slushy mixtures of water, ammonia, and methane. Some of these formations tower like mountains. Some sprawl like fields. And they may still be active. Pluto may have heat within. Heat born from radioactive decay deep in its rocky heart. Or from gravitational tugs with its companion, Charon. Charon is not a mere moon. It is a near equal, orbiting so closely in size and mass that the two worlds spin around each other. A binary system, a dance between shadow and ice. Charon's surface is marked by immense canyons, deeper and longer than the Grand Canyon. Its poles are stained crimson, painted with tholines, organic compounds born of cosmic radiation. These molecules may originate in Pluto's own atmosphere, drifting outward and settling on Charon's frozen cap. A chemical bond between worlds. A system in exchange, of gases, of energy, of mystery. Some believe Charon may hold a subsurface ocean, locked in eternal twilight. If so, then both Pluto and Charon, and what of their orbit? Pluto does not follow the rules of the classical planets. Its path is tilted, elongated, eccentric, a vast, looping ellipse that drags it far above and below the solar system's flat plane. Why? Some say Neptune caught it long ago, drawing it into this path. Others whisper of a phantom influence, an unseen giant. A hidden planet lurking in the outer dark, tugging Pluto like a marionette. Planet 9 a ghost in the gravitational web. Pluto wears a symbol across its face. A vast, pale heart of frozen nitrogen, Tomba Regio. A tribute to its discoverer. But this heart is more than a mark of sentiment. It is a clue. Within it lies Sputnik Planitia, an enormous basin of young, smooth ice. So smooth, in fact, that it seems reborn, erased of craters. 
It may float atop a buried ocean, sloshing quietly beneath miles of frozen shell. And it may be warmer than we thought. Infrared scans show a curious glow, heat leaking through the ice. Enough warmth, perhaps, to power tectonics. Or sustain life. And yet, for all this motion and churn, Pluto has no magnetic field. No compass needle would twitch in its skies. Most living worlds, Earth, Jupiter, Mercury, generate magnetic fields with molten cores. Pluto's silence hints at a different interior. Perhaps its core has solidified. Or perhaps it hides exotic materials we do not yet understand. Even the way Pluto reflects sunlight is strange. Some regions gleam with crystalline brightness. Others absorb light like velvet, stained with time and space. These dark patches may hold ancient organic matter, carbon chains forged in the distant cradle of the solar system. Frozen chemistry. Prebiotic shadows. And when Pluto swings closest to the sun, its surface ice is awakened. They sublimate, transforming from solid to gas, feeding a temporary atmosphere. And when it recedes again, that atmosphere should vanish. But it lingers. Hangs on longer than physics predicts. Something is keeping the gases afloat, some hidden energy, some slow exhale from the deep. Pluto refuses to go silent. And then comes the wildest theory of all. Some believe Pluto is not of this system. That it formed beyond our sun's birth cloud, an interstellar wanderer captured by gravity. If so, it is not a planet, not a dwarf, not a moon. It is an emissary. A message in ice from another star. A fragment of a forgotten world. And so, Pluto returns, not as the ninth planet, but as something greater. A world of its own making. A renegade. A mystery. A place that rewrites the story of our solar system. Not dead. Not quiet. Not forgotten. Pluto is alive, in its own.